What's going on everybody? Rob here, Trev, 2323s right now. I was gonna show you about this Campbell Hoshfield welder right here from, uh, actually the Campbell Hoshfield 70 amp welder, 115 volt from uh, uh, Menard. Ooh, I can't look at that because it's already burning my eyes. This is my son right here running the bead on this. What size uh, rod is that? This is a 16th inch 6013. A 60th inch 6013? 16th inch. 16th inch? 6013. It looks like a sparkler. How do you think this uh, welder welds? Um, for small house projects, it's actually pretty good. Um, I find that the 16th inch rods, even with this, are just a little too hard to strike up. Kind of stick uh, most of the time. That's why they call it stick. But, uh, I was reading more into it, and the 564, 6013 rods do strike up a little better. These are by uh, U.S. Forge. Got these at Menards. I think it was like six or seven bucks for a one-pound pack of it. But uh, these were pretty easy. The 16th inch ones I got from uh, Harbor Freight, and like I said, I really don't care for them much. But these ones they strike up pretty easy. Uh, I got it set on high right now just trying to get used to it. I don't use it too much. Like I said, small the house welds, tack welds, stuff like that. Always easy to use. What but, size plate or what size uh, could this weld up to you think? Can, this can go up to a quarter inch plate. Um, would I recommend doing anything that that thick of a plate with quarter inch? Uh, with the 564 probably not. Quarter inch plate I'd normally say do an eighth inch rod 7018. Um, but it's up to your preference, depends on what you're using it for. If it's just a tack weld, build a little shelf or something, go ahead and use the 564s on it. But if it's something structural, like a chair or something, I'd go ahead and say go ahead and use an eighth inch rod. An eighth inch rod, and what do you, you have it on? What the settings at? It just has it's low and just high. A high and a low. And what's the duty cycle on that one? Duty cycle on it is uh, 10 minutes. 10 minute duty 10 cycle? Minutes on high if you're running it consecutively. And it um, can fit into a regular house. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, 110, 110 outlet, so there's a, there's a cord here, here we go, just standard 110 outlet, hook it up, turn it on, ready to go. Do you need flux? Uh, no, the rods are already coated in flux with stick welding, uh, your rods are already going to come coated in flux, most people if you're welding say on a job site, stuff like that, the, the rods will constantly be like kiln kept, anything like that to prevent any oxygen, any other uh contaminants from getting into it personally on my preference i mean once you start heating it up and it starts burning back it's gonna push out any contaminants you have in there uh 6 to 13 isn't a high hydrogen rod so it's a little weird to run i usually run 70 18 rods at work i run them about 130 uh 130 amps but these like i said for house welds pretty easy all right let me see i'm not gonna look There's the bead right there. The one thing I will say to anyone that is a, a job site welder, these rods do burn a little fast and a little weird. Uh, it does take quite a bit of getting used to. I'm still trying to get used to it myself here. But for, like I said, for a, a house weld, this here was the 564th rod. It lays down a pretty decent bead slag's not too hard to chip off and then this here was just a small pass from the 16th 
uh, rod. They're a little weird to run on the 16th just because I'm used to running eighth inch rods. So just trying to get used to it, but with welding, it's one of those things where it's trial and error until you can get it down packed. You can say standard welding procedures, keep a short arc and try and maintain your puddle. Always watch how your puddle's reacting and control it that way. See, that's what I always do. I always watch how my puddle's reacting when I'm running my arc on my Harbor Freight. Yeah, right. He always makes fun of my bubblegum welds. Talk to you later. Subscribe, like, and share. Uh.